Features of a River, Edit South, GCSE 91 Geography course. Right, so the first feature of the river is a floodplain. So a floodplain is an area of land next to a stream or river that stretches from the banks of the channel to the base of the enclosing valley walls and experiences flooding during periods of high discharge. So if there's lots of rain or if there's a lot of water flowing through the river, and then this is the area that's going to be flooded, as you can see here. So this is it when it's not flooded and then it's flooded here. Levees. Levees are a builder of a sediment that can create a levee. OK, so by building up the sides of the river bank, this protects the area from flooding as the water must reach a higher level, uh, a higher height in order to get over the bank. So you can see the levee here. So levees, lots of people assume that they're man-made, but you can also get natural levees. And this is where the sediment is pushed to the sides. And in, especially in high periods of rain, if it goes over the top, when it comes back, the sediment's been deposited. So the next time when, it, when there's a high period of rain, the water's going to get to ha have to go to a higher um, level in order to flood. Gorges and valleys. In uh, a river's early life, it doesn't stay in one place. It will move across the landscape until it falls into a set, uh, place which sets a certain path for it to flow. Over thousands to millions of years, depending on the hardness of rock, due to erosion, the river will start to take ground from underneath it and to the side of it. After some time, the river forms a valley. Valleys can also be formed when a glacier moves down soft rock and forms a valley. When the glacier widens, it uh, starts to form a U-shaped valley instead of the V-shaped valley the river caused. So here you can see the V-shaped valley, which is caused by the river. You've got the U-shaped valley, which is caused by a glacier. Point bar. Point bars are depositional landforms which are found in the curve of meander. On one side of a meander, the water flows with more energy, meaning that more erosion can occur here, such as hydraulic action and abrasion as the water can carry a larger load through traction and saltation without it being deposited. On the other side, there isn't enough energy for the, uh, to carry the sediment, so it gets deposited. Over time, this means that the depth on one side of the meander is much shallower than on the other. After more time, the shallower side protrudes from the water, creating a point bar, which is basically like a little beach. So you can see here is a photograph of the point bar. And here's the diagram showing what's happened. So the faster flowing water is coming here. And so the sediment can be transported. But on this side, there's not enough energy for the sediment to be transported. So it gets uh, deposited and that creates a point bar. River cliffs. River cliffs are a steep sided riverbank caused by the undercutting of the bank by hydraulic action and abrasion over a period of time. So you've got the river cliff here. So what's happened is that erosions occurred here and it's undercut it, and that's created a river cliff. Interlocking spurs. So an interlocking spur is a projecting ridge that extends alternately from the opposite sides of the wall of a V-shaped valley. As the river erodes the landscape in the upper course, it winds and bends to avoid areas of hard rock. Okay, so as you can see here, the river's coming down here, and these, what look like mountains, which are part of the valley, this is the interlocking spurs. So it's having to weave round them because they're areas of hard rock. So it's going round the areas of hard rock. Okay, and you can see it again in this diagram here. So it's going around the interlocking spurs, which are areas of hard rock.